Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Boneside. On today's episode, what's up with this weather? You know, it seems to be happening more and more, but the weather is up and then it's down and the roller coaster continues. It is the 17th, nope, make that the 18th already of November as I sit right here in this beautiful sunshiny day. And uh, we're in the mid 50s. Now the average for this time of year is in the mid 40s and that'll go down to the 30s as we hit December. But the sun is glorious for us, but what does it do to the plants? Well, I've had a lot of questions from people over the last couple of weeks, especially from the beginners who took the workshop with the Minnesota Bonsai Society in the last year, and they're wondering, hey Dave, what do I do with my tree? In, out, garage, cold frame? Again, what's, what's going on with this weather and what do we do with our trees? Now the foliage is all falling off. Hey, if you didn't catch me working on the uh, larch forest, the old growth forest, just a couple episodes ago, I'll put the link up here in the upper corner for you. Um, all that color is slowly going away. So the Minnesota forests, the Minnesota hardy trees, can stay outside all year long. But you have to remember a couple of things. A couple of things that are super important with your bonsai. It depends upon the size of the pot, the depth of the pot, the soil that you're using, and whether you heal them into the ground or not. Or not. Okay, so that's a lot of information. Okay, so let's start with the size of the pot. If you have a cute little pot, it's gonna freeze solid and probably get super cold when we hit those polar vortexes. So that's probably not a good idea to keep it outside. Now, if you have a much bigger pot like these forests are, even though they're shallower, there's a lot of density of soil in there. And it's a very hardy Minnesota tree. Um, and these trees up in the bogs freeze solid with ice and probably 36 to 40 inches of frozen ground. And um, they come back every year and do just fine. But again, a bigger pot is gonna hopefully regulate that temperature just a little bit. But small versus big, perhaps one of the most important part of your pot outside during Minnesota winters, or at least upper Midwest Minnesota, um, upper Midwest in general, Minnesota for me, and who knows where for you, but notice that there's a, a bit of airflow down here. So we wanna get all of our trees, we wanna get those off of the benches and put them on the ground. So that's number one, get them on the ground because that really cold polar vortex air, when it's 22 below, this air is gonna be 22 below, but the ground will be frozen at about 30, 32 degrees, right? And so if we can heal them in with some mulch or some leaves, um, you're gonna have a protected pot and tree and roots as well. So remember, most of the times, it's not the foliage and the branches that are suffering, it's gonna be the roots that will create most of the damage for your trees. So get them off these benches, get them close to the ground, and then put all kinds of leaves and mulch in there, and then you have the critters. Now when it comes to critters, it depends upon your neck of the woods. Where are you, and uh, what kind of food and shelter do they need? When I did my forest just the other day, I lifted up the big forest, and there was a nest right underneath that pot. Now that was just from the warm months, from spring until now that they created that nest, but uh, something loved life there. They're gonna find this area, especially the voles and the mice, very, very inviting. Now, a lot of the voles and mice, for me, I hope, continue to stay underneath my deck, which is off the back of our house. There's wood piles in there, and they can go there and be nice and comfy cozy. But they've been in here in the past as well. Now, this is a garden bed. It's raised uh, two plus feet off the ground, and there's some nice fencing here. Um, but something is going to be able to climb up over this, probably, uh, because of their amazing grip and, and able to get into fine uh, spaces, right? But I have some pines in here, I have my junipers in here, and notice they're all hovered around together. So keep in mind, if you keep everything hovered together and then there's snow on here, the snow is gonna be your insulation. But the critters still might get at these. So I've been trying to buy some tree wrap this year at a couple of stores. I've been out of luck three for three, no luck on tree wrap. One store said they haven't had it for two years. So I wanna put some tree wrap around some of these trees that I really care about and I don't want any critters to chew that bottom part of the trunk when they're super hungry in the middle of winter and they want that cambium layer that even though it's cold and probably frozen, that inside layer is probably just soft enough for them to get some uh, morsels of yumminess. So you might want to wrap some of your more important trees. And of course, if they're super important for you, maybe you don't want to leave them outside. 
But when you are putting these all together, make sure you get them all nice and close together because in the winter now, they're gonna kinda hover around each other. The snow is gonna come here and it's gonna hopefully protect everything. But then in the spring, when it's really wet and things are frozen to the ground and it's warming up and freezing and warming up, um, we wanna be careful of that possible uh, fungus, you know, um, any kind of that extra moist areas for long periods of time. And so we wanna to try to separate these as soon as we can in the springtime. But get them wrapped if you can and get them in some kind of protection. Now the rabbits will not get in here, right? But if I had deer roaming in my neighborhood, which I typically don't and have never seen to, as long as I've been here, they could easily get here and chew some trees as well. So you might want to put a little cover over this if you'd have deer in your backyard for your trees. So protect them from the critters as well. So I don't know if it's too late in the season and I just need to shop earlier for tree wrap. The tree wrap is kind of that flexible cardboardy kind of papery product that you wrap around trees. And people wrap their trees to keep the deer from eating them um, and other critters, you know, for us, the rabbits. And they don't have any more. So I thought I would use some burlap here. And these trees, they tend to really like. Now I have no more room in my bigger uh, enclosed raised bed. And so the bunnies could still get in here um, or the voles can always get in here. And so I wanna wrap these trees pretty good. I got some nice buds forming on here, some nice buds. I wanna make sure that this doesn't uh, uh, get lost to the critters. So I've got the burlap. Of course, the problem with the burlap is there's holes in it and it's not very, very solid. But again, I think if we improvise and we just wrap this around a couple of times, I'm gonna have protection on my trees. So this will make it very, very thick and very, very cumbersome for them to dig around and get into these trees. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it nice and high on this tree. You'll notice there's a maple tree tucked in there. I don't care about that. And there we go. And then I have some electrical tape. Um, and I think that'll be nice and flexible and that'll just work. I have a couple of these for some reason. And so we're just gonna go ahead and get some electrical tape on there. You can use, of course, duct tape or anything you have laying around. This is what I had laying around. So there we go. I will put one more on the bottom as well, just to kind of make it tight. And hopefully that's so much work for the voles, they're not gonna get to it. I'll keep an eye on it, and if they are starting to dig through it, maybe I'll have to put like a more solid uh, a bit of tape around there. So let's cut a little bit more for these other two. Another thing to keep in mind when you're wrapping the trees like this is we're going to have snow here. And in Minnesota, if we get an average of 51 inches of snow in the year and it snows pretty soon and stays all year and keeps stacking up, this will be covered in snow. And so the critters will be able to come right up here on the snow banks and chew this part of the tree. I'm not so worried about that part of the tree. Remember, our trees are about our trunk. I want the trunk to stay uh, clean from any girdles. And so I want the bottom part protected more so than the top so as long as i'm good from here up i don't care if they chew that i'm still in good shape one more and of course when i take this out in the spring i'm going to hate that i wrapped it around that much but i'll just take a scissors and cut that off i know this is one trunk one trunk and that's two trunk i can see the two right there i'll be careful as i rip those apart so let's hope that the voles leave those alone. I'm standing just outside the passive solar green frame and I've got a larch here. So again, the larch in the bigger pots and larch in general are Minnesota hardy and they're gonna be fine outside, but I wouldn't want them this high on a bench, right? We'd put this on the ground. For me, when I make a decision whether to keep this outside or not, a lot of it has to do with the pots I have and the tree that it is. This is one of my nicer larch trees and this is one of my nicer pots. It's a Sarah Rayner pot. Now the Sarah Rayner pot has been kilned at a temperature that would make this Minnesota hardy of a pot, but I don't wanna risk it. Now I'd love the extra patina on here, but that'll come with the years it'll be outside in the spring, summer, and fall. But what I wanna make sure is that it stays protected. And I want this tree to be under a little bit more TLC because it's one of my better trees. So this will go inside either the PSGF this year, one of the cold frames, or I could even keep it in the garage. Because remember, if this freezes solid to about 32 degrees and stays that way, 
that's okay as long as those roots are not getting below that 20 range when we start to get nervous. Oh, it feels great in here. It's the passive solar green frame and we're inside and the fan is kicked on because it is definitely above 50 degrees in here. As a matter of fact, with 50 degrees outside and this much sun we've had all day long, this thing has kept it probably below uh, 65, maybe even 60 for most of the day. Without it on, it uh, can reach 70 degrees. As a matter of fact, my wall thermometer here says 69. Now that one's always, I think, closest to the sun and doesn't have that accurate temperature. This Govi right here, my Govi thermometer is not in the sun at all. It's kind of hanging in the air right at about uh, uh, mouth level for me. And I can look at the Govi thermometer right now and it says it's 66 degrees in here. So that's not gonna go off until it's 50 or colder. So it's gonna be on for a while yet. And so the door is wide open. I've got the top fan on off right now because I'm filming. And then that fan right now is a brand new one. So this one's an AC Infinity fan. It's only a 10 inch fan, fits in the 12 inch opening beautifully, but really a nice powerful um, um, fan. And there's, there's metal windows on it or uh, vent, vent plates that when the fan kicks in, it blows it up and lets the air go out and then it closes a lot tighter than those plastic rings that I had up there that really were one of my worst purchases for the uh, PSGF. That is gonna kick out some really good uh, air. And if I want to, if 35 in the sun is still gonna create too hot of a PSGF for my plants, I can turn that fan around and suck the air from the outside and bring it in here and bring 30 degree weather or 35 degree weather. Even though it's sunny, if it's only 35, that cool air might cool this off a lot faster than me trying to force the air out of here. We'll keep experimenting throughout the winter to see. My biggest fear, of course, is what are these doing when it's 68 degrees right now? And so what I also purchased is a, 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 um, a soil meter for humidity and for heat. So I can see how wet my plants are and I can see how uh, hot they are. So I just go ahead and stick this in here and I go ahead and push the button. And again, there's an app for that, right? And I can look at my app, I can pull it up and I can say, hey, what's the temperature in here? This pot right now is showing 50 degrees Fahrenheit. If I go back over here and shove this down in here and push the button, and recalibrate. This one down here is actually 58 degrees Fahrenheit. So that one's a little warmer, oddly enough. So we can use those tools, use them to our advantage, and we can try to keep the PSGF or your cold frame, whatever you're using, as cool as possible, or more importantly, as regulated as possible. I don't mind some warmth in here a little bit because even if it's 50, 60 on the air, these pots are gonna take a little bit longer to warm up, but they will warm up. And if they're in the sun and they're dark color like this black, I can actually feel heat on this guy. And the sun isn't even as high as it's been all day. This pot here is also warm to the touch. And if that's warm, that's gonna warm up those roots. So we're only in November. In December, if I continue to have temps in the 60s, then we're in trouble. That's my biggest fear with this passive solar green frame, that it's gonna be more of a greenhouse effect and less of a cold frame feel. If that is the case, I'm gonna block these windows on the lower level. I'm gonna go ahead and block them with a, maybe just this one for a part of a, a couple of weeks, and then maybe all three. I'll block them so less um, greenhouse effect happens during the day, and then uh, we'll see how cold it gets at night. So that's the PFGF when we come in, we're talking about temperatures and where to put our plants. Now let's go to the garage and the cold frame discussion. Now out here in the garage, I have a cold frame. So do you need a cold frame? You really don't. And again, if you have one or two trees, you can really take care of those trees and do really good things with them by moving them around as you need to. Um, and I'll, I'll always say this, don't forget your tree. <laughs> don't just leave it alone for weeks and months at a time. Now, yes, you don't have to water every day like in the summertime. Um, and there's a lot less work in the winter that you're doing with almost all of your trees. But if you leave them in a garage, heated or not, connected or not, cold frame or not, that tree is going to dry out eventually. So what's the difference between a garage and a cold frame? Well, this cold frame is insulated, top, bottom, side, and back and front, all of that insulated with the pink stuff, right? And when it's closed, it acts like a cooler, like what you keep your beverages in. So it's going to stay a relatively regulated temperature. Now, if we get really big swings outside, this is in a garage, the garage will be a relatively regulated temperature, and this is even more regulated. 
And if it gets just too cold, I have a heater down here that's temperature um, uh, sensitive, right? So the, if it gets to 32 degrees, it's going to kick on for a little bit and go up to about 35 to 40 and stop. We want to keep this about 40 as long as possible. Now, I mentioned a couple of trees. Well, see, I have, of course, way more than a couple of trees. And I house a lot of client trees in here. And we don't want to have these trees um, um, forgotten or hard to get to or a lot of work involved. So if you have a lot of trees, this kind of space becomes really, really nice. And as I said millions of times before, make sure that you make everything accessible when you make a cold frame. If it's not accessible, your trees are gonna suffer. So I have to be able to get the up top back corners. I have to get down here in the nooks and crannies. Make it comfortable. But now this is gonna regulate your temps. If you need the heat, you can add it. Do you need light? The, uh, the uh, jury is still out. I do not put hardly any light in here unless I'm working in here, which is why I turned that on. But you don't need lights for your cold frames. A lot of the pine trees and the things that we keep um, um, in a cold frame, especially the pines, you know, a lot of the pines in the mountains are under feet of snow, especially when they're young, right? The saplings, the first couple years, they're under snow. They bend down. They get snow on them. They don't need the light, per se. They're in a dormancy period. They're just kind of resting. But remember, in here, it's not going to freeze. So you've got to check them and water them, probably once every week, once every two weeks at the most, the furthest gap between watering, and maybe once every five, six days if it's a super dry winter, super cold and dry, right? Less humidity, less uh, moisture in the air in here, it's going to dry off. So these are all resting in here for the winter, but i got to check them. So what's the difference between here and the garage right here? Well, the garage is going to be colder because it's not a heated garage, but it's attached. But when it's super cold, some of the air is going to seep in and it's going to get well below freezing in here, especially when we get a polar vortex. It could be in the teens in here. And again, that 15 degree and lower range is pretty scary for most trees. 20 and higher is ideal. And anything around that freezing to, or 35 to 40, if you can keep it that way, that's great. But the question still remains, what do I do in my garage if sometimes there's a warm spell like today? It's 54 degrees out there. Well, if I have all my doors open and the sun is peering in here, it's going to warm up in here as well. If you keep all the door closed, it probably wouldn't get 54 in this garage today, even though it's 54 outside. Maybe you'd get 44, and that's okay for your trees. But if your garage was frozen for the last two weeks, and your tree was frozen, you didn't even have to water for a couple of weeks because it's frozen solid, and it hits 50 for a couple of days, your pot might thaw out. It might start to dry out, and you might have to water. So just remember, you have to watch your trees. You have to keep up with your trees. Look at them. And if you have got one or two, you can move them around. The coldest part of your uh, garage, if it stays in that upper 40 range, put it the at the, the bottom corner that's the coldest, right? Keep it near a door that has a draft that can maybe keep it a little bit cooler than, a, than an attached garage that has mostly uh, 45 and above. And if it's a heated garage and you like it at 50, um, then you're in that risky territory where your trees could warm up and wake up sooner in the spring. Uh, maybe even in the fall here, early winter, but it's going to be more spring that I would worry about than right now. So keep them in the garage, but keep an eye on them. And if it's in a detached garage, they might freeze solid. If they freeze solid, fantastic, you don't have to water. But double check your trees, look at them at least once a week, so you make sure that you can water them if they need the water. The cabin cold frame. So for me, I have the garage. I have the garage cold frame. I now have the passive solar green frame. And I have, of course, still the cabin cold frame. So if I want to keep my trees as regulated as possible, I can put it into one of these categories, right? And this one is pretty consistent. There are some windows, so it does get some light. But these trees will almost always wake up a little sooner than the ones in the greenhouse or the uh, garage cold frame, rather. And so do I want them to wake up early? Oftentimes, no. And the reason why I say no is because when you have 60 or more trees, if things are starting to wake up too soon, you're gonna be playing the uh, bonsai shuffle music over and over and over again, and in and out, and what do I do, and it's a lot of work. So you want them to wake up pretty much together as much as possible, but when they wake up, you do have that secondary place to put them, um, because if you keep them in a passive solar green frame, or you keep them in a cold frame, or you keep them in the garage with less light, you're gonna get longer, leggier growth, right? So the windows are not a bad thing, but you have to be careful with the species that are in there and if they're waking up early. So we're going to get these in here in the next week or so, and it's going to be December already, and then they'll have plenty of time to do their final rest. Now, the trick about not putting your trees in the fall into your green frames early enough is watering. So my hose has been away for three or four weeks. 
because we had a week where it was 28 at night, 26, 22 one morning, it was really cold. And so your hoses freeze up. So I put them up in my attic and I haven't had a hose for three weeks. That means I have to water all these like Nigel Saunders does by hand. I have a lot of trees. It takes a lot of time of squirting the bottles on these trees. So if you do keep your trees outside in the fall, or of course in the spring when things start to thaw out, you can't forget to water your trees. So these have been a little dry from time to time when I've come around with that water bottle. And so it's a good thing that I'm checking these trees. My update for today is the Passive Solar Green Frame improvements. So instead of that white fan that was supposed to open up and release air at about 75 degrees, it never really opened up that much. And there was no air circulating, so I have a nice AC Infinity fan. Now that was a little bit more spendy than I wanted to spend, but boy, it's like everything else in life. You get what you pay for. And that is temperature sensitive, so it's got another sensor right there hanging down, and when that gets a certain temperature, it's gonna fan out the air. Or I can turn that around and put it the other way. The other update right down below it is my student Marco and his Bonsai Acres plaque that he made for me last year with his wood burning technique. We've got that in the uh, display area and where I'm gonna work on my trees. So thanks to Marco, it's looking really nice here inside the PSGF. And my last update for today is this. Does anybody remember an episode I did a while back showing some images and does anybody recognize this image? This is one of Tony's prints. It was one of my favorite. I just wanted to have this somewhere in the passive solar green frame. And so I went and ordered it from one of those places where you can order things. And I went with a metal frame instead of the canvas or the wood. And this is just a print right on kind of a, an aluminum or a metal type surface. So it's really going to be sturdy. We'll keep an eye on it. And uh, that, when you come in, it's right off there to the right. Loving the print from Tony. Another beautiful fall day. Nothing like 50s and sunshine in late November. We're less than two weeks away from December. So I've got to figure out where the rest of my trees are going to go and how I'm going to organize the masses. But I've got some time. We've got 50 tomorrow. It's going to get chilly this week, but then 40s again by next weekend and the week after Thanksgiving. So uh, not too horrible. And then it'll be December already. My, is time flying. It is late November, and so the sun has already changed dramatically from when I started filming this one today. But that does mean that we're going to wrap this one up. So hey, as always, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you on the next one.